because they just don't resonate and I'm seeing nods, heads nodding everywhere in the audience. So it is, it is a difficult journey that we're all on. Um, I'd like to say a special thank you to uh, Lorraine and Julie and Quantum Bookstore for their wonderful support. Um, every time I walk into that place, I feel amazing energies. If I'm not feeling really balanced, I will walk in there and even just sitting in there for a, a few minutes, I feel my energies just rebalance and it's an amazing place. It's fifth dimensional energy is already pouring into that place. So um, I just want to give my special gratitude and thanks to Lorraine and Julie and Quantum. I'd like to thank Carl um, for the effort that, that this amazing lady has put in with her wonderful sandwiches and, and the help in the kitchen area. Thank you so much, Carmel. You're an angel. And I'd like to thank Damien and Trish for, for being a part of this as well, um, to offer the help to, to film it. And uh, Damien, you're amazing. And, and thank you very, very much. Very much appreciate the effort. And you too, Trish. Thank you. And, yeah. It's going to go a long way, I think. It's, this is only the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Now, I just want to finish off with the moon. And uh, we'll, I'll talk for about an hour and a bit, and then we'll go into question time, because I'm sure people have questions. Um, and we'll just run it through from there. So, to get these other energies out of the way, the moon. Now, the moon was once a spacecraft. It was once the jewel of the forces, or it's not really the right word to use, not the forces, it's, it was the jewel in the crown of the fleet of the beings of the true light. And it was, you can almost call it a scientific laboratory. It was created by one of the seven muses or the seven sisters from the Pleiades who you know as Diana, the moon goddess, who is a lower aspect of the being you know as Archangel Ariel. This amazing being created this spaceship to go around seeding life on planetary bodies. So it's originally a Pleiadian craft. Now, when that moon came here and first seeded life here, the flora and the fauna is what we're talking about, the ecosystem, the love, like, like I said, when we take on a responsibility on that level, you inject the energy of your being into whatever it is you are doing. So, Diana the Moon Goddess, a large portion of the energy stream of that being is what makes up our ecosystem here on Earth. The Divine Mother is the foundation behind all of that. Okay? Now, when the Earth started plunging into lower vibratory levels, and the reptilian races and all the draconian stuff and all that heavy stuff came here and wanted to take over the planet. Her heart was dying. She was heartbroken. And the beings that she thought would come and defend Earth didn't. Because these beings knew the greater plan. And so Diana made a decision to come here with that ship she armed it to the best of her ability, because naturally she's not a fighter, obviously. And came here with that ship to defend the Earth against these beings. And in that process, unfortunately, she lost the battle. And in that process, they were able to gain incredible knowledge and genetic knowledge of not only us, our humanoid form here on Earth, the human race here, but other races as well, because that was, like I said, a laboratory. And it had its own ecosystem, it had its own environment on there. It was once, the, like I'm saying, the jewel. And the love you have for the moon is that ancient memory. Okay? 
is that ancient memory. Now the moon is not what it once was. After the reptilian greys and all that group, they put it around Mars. And they had it around Mars for some time. And they trashed it. They totally trashed it. What you see up in that sky now is nothing to what it once was. And they've smothered it with silicon and all these sort of substances. Now, what they did is they took the moon, and, and mind you, the drive system was removed. And the drive system are certain crystals which are being stored. You know how we have safes here on this planet to hide things in? Well, the way we do it in the higher levels is we create a vibratory reality. You can just make a little pocket of a vibration that's unique to the rest of the universe. And no one needs to know about it. It's a little hiding place. So you can create a little frequency spectrum, a little tiny puddle of energy or reality, and you hide things in it. And that's how we do it. So, these crystals are held at a certain frequency. Now, when the right time comes, that beam will match with that frequency, and yes, she is incarnated here on Earth. And she will access those crystals. And that moon will need to be driven out of here. Otherwise, it will be destroyed when the Earth becomes a star. And where it's going to go, it's going to go back to Mars. Because the beings that live inside that moon, I know I said little green men, right? But they are just little worker guys. When I went there, and I had my high self come into it, I got up off the table. Okay? And I'm diverting, but... And I was confronted by, eventually, as I went searching and seeking this guy out, uh, like a draconian. And the, the physical appearance was really close to what you call the wraith on Stargate Atlantis. Right? It's amazing these people that make movies where they get their information from. Long, flowing hair, and they threw everything they had at me, and the heat I could feel coming off my body. Remember, my upgraded beam came in, and I had my protective energy in my aura, and the heat that I could feel coming off my body. And these beings were running around going crazy because nothing they did, they threw everything at me, and I'm still just walking around. I could not believe it. Because they've taken me many, many times, and all of a sudden, for me to just get up and walk around, and they can no longer stop me. That, poor, I'll tell you what, that freaked them out. So, and, and I walk through walls. You can walk through walls. Remember, we can do anything when you're in that state of being. And it's not George here, me, George, that did this. George is just a lower aspect of this individual personality for this incarnation. The greater part of me took over and did this. Not another being taking over me, my high self. Okay? It's no different to someone who's going to be in a car accident, but somehow they say, oh, the hand of God reached in and interfered and saved me. By a miracle. No, it's not the hand of God, it's your hand. Because it's through your higher being that you're connected to God. Okay? So your higher self is always looking after you when it needs to. So here I am and I'm walking through walls and I'm seeking this guy out and I'm confronted with him on one side of the wall and the walls were like a like a bathroom. You know, it's translucent but it's not transparent. It had a little wavy sort of appearance to it, it's made from silicon and that. And he's defeated on the other side of the wall, slump like that, long hair just flowing. And I said to him, okay, now do you understand? He said, yes. I said, now I'm going to share with you who you are. And I was able to connect with him and take him back through all the eons of time in the lower universes, everything is done, everything is been, and reconnect him from the point in time when he first journeyed into the lower universes. That what's termed as the fall, which is really the dive, <laughs> okay? No one's being seduced into this journey, you're right? It's another con. When he first chose to come down into the lower universes, and he fell apart. And you guys can do this too, and I'm sure you're doing it out there as well, okay? It's not just me doing this work. Now, when he remembered who he truly was, I said, are you ready now to return to the light? And he said, yes. And I walked through the wall and I hugged him and helped heal all his energies and everything. Now this guy in the moon was the head guy, a part of this empire, 
who, the reason why we haven't had many good spaceships flying around at all is because not only do they have equipment that sees the good spacecraft around and they go and target them and chase them and shoot them out of here, chase them out of here, this guy has very powerful foresight and he could see the whole spectrum of the fourth dimension. He's one of a really powerful being. Now, when I took this guy out, it wasn't long after that we had ETs come and visit a group of people that I was seeing and they were really nervous, you know. And it's like all of a sudden they had access and they were wondering how the hell they had access when they didn't before. I knew what was going on because of what I did, but I couldn't tell too many people because that's ego, right? Apparently. I keep getting accused of having all this ego. All I want to do is be me and share, but no, no, it's all ego. So, the moon, that guy got taken out and then everything's been changed. And now these other beings have heard what's happened and they're not happy and there's other things going on that uh, you're all about to see. So, the moon was then placed into orbit around the Earth. And the world yeah. has done that. Now, the female reproductive cycle, originally there was no period pain for the women. Okay? It was, actually it was a euphoric feeling. And ovulation was euphoria, the creation of life. Okay? Oh, <laughs> tingling from head to toe as I'm saying this. Euphoria. Can you, I don't know, if you women, after being tortured for so long, if you can just try and get your heads around that, euphoria as opposed to pain and agony. Okay? Oh, my hair's standing on it. So, the reproductive cycles were in harmony with the 28 rotation, rotation of the sun. That's what it was synchronized with, with the Christ energy, the sun, son of God. Now, they took it to the earth and because they wanted to suppress the feminine, they plugged it in to the reproductive cycles of the feminine energy, 28 day cycle. And that's why the circular is orbit, uh, the orbit is circular. And that is the mechanical device that they are using to suppress the feminine energy. It is your ball and chain. It is your shackles. The moon is not what it once was. When you're there and you're doing your moon dances once a month, it breaks my heart. Because at the moment when you do that, they're manipulating you on this ancient memory, but you are the slaves now worshipping the master. And I'm sorry, part of me is so sorry, because I know so many women feel that connection, that deep connection to the moon. But I cannot possibly stand here and tell you anything other of what's really going on. I can't do that. I have to be real. I have to be truthful. I can't tell you what you want to hear. I have to tell you what you desperately need to hear. You have to let go of the moon. And it served an excellent process. Excellent. Because it not only served the feminine in an amazing way, it served us men in an amazing way. The lunatic is in our heads, right? Lunatic. Think about that. It forced us all to dig deep. Without that moon being placed in orbit around the earth, we would never have had the experiences we have had here on this planet in this reality. Okay? We would never have had that. That is the mechanical device that's making all of this happen. And I used to watch Bugs Bunny as a kid. And there's Marvin the Martian with this Earth space modulator on the moon. And he's got this big ray gun and he's beaming it down on the Earth. I mean, they're telling us. They're telling you. What's going on? Cheeky buggers. I love stirring this up through these films. Let's put it right in the face, in plain sight. So, the moon also pulls the tides, right? Now the ocean, the water, is the emotional body of the feminine. And that's why you have these incredible upheavals emotionally at the time of your ovulation and other times. And that's why men have such a hard time 
connecting with women with their emotional bodies because we don't get the torture the emotional torture that women are going through we don't get it I get it now and still I'm scratching the surface I've been working with the divine feminine so deeply so incredibly deeply for many years now and intensely over the last couple of years oh, as you know my, my, everything's changed and we, I'm telling you, we have no idea what they're going through. I'm still a kindergarten. The, the fragmentation of the emotional body of a woman is so fragmented, it's in agony. So please, be patient and respect the feminine, your loved ones. Understand what they're going through. Now, That moon, as I said, has to be taken out again. So that's the history of the moon. That's where it comes from. That's why it's there. And when that moon gets taken out of here, for those who are not in the fifth dimension and are still out here in the matrix, when that moon leaves, and I was shown this, I went through it, and probably nowhere near to the degree that women are going to go through this, right? But I lived it. And I felt this incredible pulling coming out of this part of my being, a combination of the solar plexus, the sacral and the root chakra. It was horrendous. You can physically feel the pulling. And that's what every woman's going to feel. And the emotion that I felt was sobbing tears of joy, finally freedom from oppression. Finally. And that's coming. And you will sob tears of joy if you haven't already gone through the hard winter. So, have a think about that. And like I say, all this information that I share, whoever does a little pendulum thing, whatever other method you use to clarify truth from fiction, you do it. You go for it. With everything that I've said. Because I know where I'm coming from. That's the moon. And I want to end that kind of energy in this room. I think I've said enough for that sort of paradigm. So, I think it's time to change the energy patterns and go to something much brighter. Thanks, mate. Now, the ascension process has, like I said, steps to it. We talk about the dimensional doorway. So, you know, what are these dimensional doorways? They are essentially made up like that, as we all know. You're all familiar with that cycle, with that symbol. And it has something to do with this symbol. Now, I, I put this symbol up on my last talk and people are wondering, I didn't mention it, and they're wondering, what was that symbol that he drew? Because he didn't tell us what it was, because I talked about the medicine wheel and everything. This was the other symbol. This is the earth, and this is the path that we're on. And we're right about here, at the junction. And you will have three paths to choose from. You will have the path of technology, Technocrats, with all their wonderful technology, amazing stuff, it dazzles everybody. And then you will have the beings of what we refer to as conditional love or the false light. Me, what path am I taking? Well, I'm staying right here on Mother Earth, and I'm choosing the middle path. Thank you very much. I ain't going nowhere. So you can go with the greys and all their wonderful technology if you like, like those people that are off in Mars already, and many more that are going to be going there. And, and not just there, other planetary systems too, because it's not just greys, Mars, it's not just that. There's, 
I'm just generalising with those because that's what's in the psyche of everybody at the moment. There's a whole lot of other races involved too, taking all the different regions as well. Or you can go with a false light, and I assure you the overwhelming majority will go with these guys. I travelled into the future with my consciousness, and this journey was so horrendous for me because I didn't cope very well with it at all. Because um, I wasn't as evolved as I am now, and uh, I freaked out. It took me a week to get over it to settle down with my energies. And I saw spaceships in the skies everywhere. It was well into 2012, and um, people were like zombies just walking. I remember going around shaking, "Come on, these aren't the real guys. What are you doing? Don't get on board the ships." There were tidal waves coming in. It was I was on a headland. There were ships everywhere. People were just walking in lines to get on board their ships. I like in a trance. Okay? And the energy of the environment at the time was really, really uncomfortable. Okay? And that's what's going to happen to these people. That is their path. And it took me a week to get over it at least. And it was interesting because I had a friend, because this happened to me on like a Friday, and then I had a friend on a Monday. I spoke to them and they had a similar experience three days apart. See? So, yeah. Now, you all know that this is perfect balance, and of course, you know, you wipe all that out and you're left with pretty much, right? The fish of Christianity, right? Everybody knows that, right? You see it on the stickers on the back of cars, okay? That's where that symbol originally comes from. They just haven't completed the circles. That's all it is. So the people who designed that sticker know originally where it comes from, but for the layman, they haven't got a clue. I think it's got to do with Pisces. The Piscean age. That's what I think it's got to do with. It does, because it happened in that period, but it's not the main reason. The main reason is that the womb of the mother the almond, the amygdala. And sure, the almond also represents the flame. I know all that. I'm not just focusing on one area. But the main amygdala, Magdalene, the womb of the mother, Jesus and Mary Magdalene were twin flames. Mary Magdalene is that being, but in its feminine aspect. Mary Magdalene was the walking incarnation of Mother Earth. And what do they do? They call her a prostitute. <laughs> Come on, hello. They've always got to put down the feminine, undermine her power. So, when we go through the ascension process, everybody, it, and it doesn't matter what relationship you are in, what kind of relationship you are in, it does not matter. There is no judgment here. Okay? What you will naturally want to do inside of yourself is gravitate to your twin flame. And people say to me, well, hang on, I've got past life memories of being a woman when it's a man standing in front of me. And I'm going, well, you as an individual did not have that life. What you're blending with is with your feminine counterpart. People can't grasp the concept, okay, of the fact that as an incarnation here on this planet that they think that there's just this body and then there's androgyny. I could tell you I've been to planets where the whole race is androgynous. But only the physical. Only the physical. The expression of the being. They're divided into masculine and feminine. Just because the Physical container says androgyny does not mean that they are androgynous. Far from it. Far from it. It's always got to do with the expression of the being. So it doesn't matter what body they come in. So you will naturally gravitate because you've got male and female. Christ energy is perfect balance. Okay? You're going to want to do this. It's, it's gonna, I've had people come to me and say, man, you know I'm in this relationship, but I can feel this other woman calling me. I can feel it. I can feel it. So deep. And this is what we call divine sacred union. So, 
you have. Remember, it's perfect balance. True ascension can only be achieved by the golden mean spiral of the masculine coming together with the golden mean spiral of the feminine coming together in divine sacred union and that is the Holy Grail. That is the Holy Grail. And I'm not saying that to undermine any relationship, any marriage, anything like that. It does not undermine that. And that's where the church has gone wrong because on one level they know this. But they've forced it on people to the nth degree. They won't allow people to have relationships and freedom on this world. They won't allow that. Okay? Because they're control freaks. Yeah, we know that. So like I said, no judgment. Whatever relationship you're in, you will automatically have this awakening take place inside of you. And you will just know. You will look into each other's eyes and say, darling, it's time for me to go. And especially when it comes time to walk through those dimensional doorways. And you are happy, each partner will just be happy to go your own separate ways. Now I know that's hard to take for a lot of people. They don't quite get what I'm saying. And a lot of people go, oh, you know, he's talking about the dissolvement of marriage, you know, the sacred thing. Okay? Well, Mary Magdalene and Jesus were two sides of the same flame. They were twin flames. One being. Isis and Osiris. And that's what sister wife thing is all about. Sister wife, what does it mean? When you find your perfect counterpart, that person will be your father, your husband, if you're a woman, will play the role as your father, will play the role as your husband, your lover, your brother, and your son. And vice versa. Your mother, your sister, your daughter, your lover, the whole lot. It is just so beautifully harmonious and counterbalanced. It surpasses everything. And there's a lot of ET races that talk about polyamorism. Okay? Free loving. Well, if you want to continue to live a polyamoristic life, then you will not experience divine sacred union and you will not ascend. And I'm sorry, it's like you will and you will and you will and all these like orders are being thrown around. I'm just telling you what I know, what's deep in here and what all of you soon will know as well, deep in here. And I know, I've spoken to people and they already know it. There's a lot of people that know this stuff already. I mean, this is well known. So this symbol is really important because that explains our journey into sacred union through to ascension. Perfect balance. Now, I've written that up there too because we see our society all of a sudden start to fall apart. And it is, isn't it? Everything is crumbling. So it starts, you know, with the finances, the economies and all that. And we can see that the ecosystem is now starting to fall apart. And it's just going to compound and compound. But I can assure you that Mother Earth is refraining and holding back. And the majority of the Earth changes, so to speak, are going to happen right at the end. Alright? So you've got time between now and then to get yourselves organised. To, to get the awareness happening that this is coming. And I'm sharing this with you not to say, but my career, my, you know, the plans that I had, hey, mine too. You know, there's a lot of things that I wanted to do in life, there's a lot of things my kids wanted to do in life. And one of them's like, oh, Dad, I think I'm just going to miss out on getting my license. Like, from a teenage boy, I can tell you that's a big thing to miss out. That hurts. That really hurts. So, for, for people who are in the know, they know what's coming, but don't stop living life. Do not stop sucking the most out of this reality because the way this reality is now, it has never, ever, ever existed before. Never in creation. 
There's been similar cycles that have come and gone, but never has it been so intense. Right? So don't stop living. Get out there and just suck every moment out of life. Because it'll never be like this ever again. There'll be similar cycles in the future, but never like this, exactly like this. So go for it. And Muhammad once said, if you're in the middle of planting a tree and the world's coming to an end, finish planting the tree. And I'm out there, I'm still landscaping my garden, I'm planting trees that I know are going to be destroyed. I'm not going to stop. I'm still nurturing and creating life. See, that's the process. Don't give up. Go for it. Really suck every moment out of this place. It's what it's here for. It's what you're here to do. Enjoy it. Really enjoy it. Now, I would like to read something out to you, which comes from, like this is a really big honour for me, which comes from our Divine Mother Sophia. It didn't come through me personally, it came through someone that I know who's incredibly connected to the consciousness of this planet and the Divine Mother. The separation in creation of spirit and matter, male and female, imbalance and suppression of the divine feminine, has produced the circumstances that we are currently existing in. War, environmental changes, epidemics, extinctions, global crisis and threats, and dualities such as good and evil seem to define the reality of our world. We are now truly awakening to the tasks that lay ahead to break free and ride the wave of this great shift on the organic path of life into our higher destiny. Fear, ignorance and separation is the result of the dark void and mystery being so misunderstood that one becomes vulnerable to losing themselves to evil forces. Without understanding it as the mother womb that needs our union with her, we are subject to the torments of suffering, pain and confusion which produce a kind of hell. The, ignorant, the inorganic entities, archons, demiurge and life creating powers with all their deceptions just try and run the show and we lose our truth, wisdom and the protection of spirit when we forget who we are. Good ends up getting lost in what evil produces and it becomes an inner war and struggle, creating external chaos and the need for the great quest for truth, hope and divine love. These conditions are the nightmare of Gaia. I do the soul work to awaken us to her as Sophia. It's understanding the difference between Gaia and Sophia. Gaia is the planetary personality and Sophia, Christ Sophia, is the Heavenly Mother. Faced with the struggle to dismantle the false matrix, recover my multidimensional aspects and alchemically transform the world. She and I are one. She needs our help and we need hers to complete this. Nature is divine will, the breath and life force of Gaia Sophia. This is where we need to be in union with her to strengthen the immune system of her body and our own. To wipe away the germs and enemy and live the true dream creating inner union of male-female and merging good with evil, light and dark, fear with love, gives us the experience of balance and neutrality, which allows the negatives to dissolve and be the regenerative kundalini force of the underworld that produces good things. The forces of darkness are therefore not denied or misused. They are simply returned to the Mother Goddess to purify and they stay underground where they belong. This is, and underground doesn't mean <laughs> ground, okay? That's, you know, the underworld does not mean in the crust, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a reality. This is the power of the fertile womb that can birth magic, divinity and enlightenment into the fabric of matter, drawing in the rays of heaven, the true essence of Gaia. Evil and negative forces are dissolved into the great void because the darkness is no longer misunderstood and mishandled. The dark serves you. Okay? Understand that how it serves you. 
The refusal to surrender and the need to control everything and have power has to be given over to the trust of spirit and the divine plan so that we act in union with earth instead of abusing all that Gaia provides and all falling prey to the forces of the grand deception. When the centre point of harmony and balance is achieved and our power becomes love and wisdom, the tree of knowledge and our soul path becomes one with the tree of life. The union of heaven, our higher self, the underworld, our deep soul, mother womb and unconscious, and the earth, our body and home, is what we all seek to achieve as co-creators. My path as Sophia has secured this for life as I have taken the journey of the world soul that we need to assist in the completion thereof. With the will to become one with the flow of death, transformation, balance and renewal, one can shed the old voices of authority, the forces of the false matrix and the negative technologies that have tried to have power over us. We can allow destruction to transform us internally first rather than have destruction externally try and teach us where we still have to grow. When we release the pain of separation, find the goddess within, the god goddess within, and recognize the eternal connection that is always with us, we can triumph over the forces that limit and control our creative energy. This is not physical death and destruction. It is the power that releases us from the forces that no longer serve us. Bringing love and union to the places that are in darkness and that feel abandoned, lost or forgotten is how we can emerge from our own deep sleep and then reclaim our spiritual fire and creativity. By aligning to the healing power of love that surrounds us, we can step out of the way of ourselves and become not an obstacle but an agent of the divine will. This is the intent of the mother who by essence unconditionally loves, nurtures and protects us. Only when we turn our back on this do we experience danger and threat and contribute to the wounds of the earth. This is the age of awakening to how we stop this pattern of destruction. This whole journey over time, the path of free will, the work of the world soul and the intention of nature and spirit leads us to the magnificent era of which we are on the cusp. The deceptions and traps that remove us from our highest destiny are going to be exposed and as things get shaken up, my love and truth as the mother goddess Sophia will always remain and protect us through this great shift and transition. Anything we've got? Remember I told you about, um, just quickly, uh, the Council of Twelve. Well, this is something really important to understand who these beings are, the managers of the universe. Because the Council of Twelve, right, really are the embodiment of 12 different archetypal streams of the universal consciousness. That's what they embody. And I'm sure you've heard about, oh, we've been dumbed down to two strands of DNA, but we're meant to have 12. Well, guess what? Each being is a strand of DNA. So when we get fully activated, with all our DNA strands, we are going to be functioning with all the wisdom of all 12 archetypes at all times. We will be integrating with the whole universal structure. So all these DNA researchers say that you've got two DNA strands. I can assure you there's a whole bunch of people in this room that are operating from six or seven already. Don't listen to what the scientists on this planet are telling you. Because otherwise you're operating from a split personality of only two archetypes and that is not possible. We have the whole range happening here. Some more than others. Some have a stronger archetype or DNA strand activated than others do. There is so much deception going on in this world. Twelve archetypes, twelve DNA strands. Each archetype is a DNA strand. 
will be functioning from all 12 at all times. That is the wisdom of a human being. Okay, just bear with me for we'll, we'll just two seconds because I've got something that's so profound I would like to share with you. People say, yeah, Father, Son, Mother Earth, I don't believe it. And um, I know I've spoken of Gematria, okay? And I've got to work from some notes because I haven't done any number crunching in a while. I've been working with a feminine for a long time now, so my number crunching has gone a little bit astray, so. Okay. Gematria is number, numbers assigned to the value of letters in the ancient Greek alphabet and the ancient Hebrew alphabet. If you understand Gematria, you can decode the Old Testament and you can decode the New Testament, the Hebrew and the Greek. Okay? The reason they did that was because they knew it was going to be manipulated. So if you hide a code in the scripts, then it's hard for those scripts to be manipulated. Now the value of the Magdalene is 153. And you've heard of the 153 fishes in the net. And I just want to say, Margaret Starbird, you are a legend. Okay? The work that she's done in this area is amazing. And David Filer, you are a legend. The work that he's done in this area is amazing. So if we... Now I've talked about on my website, I can't go into the whole lot here, but on my website all the harmonic equation is there and this cycle goes for 24,832 years. And everyone talks, no it's 26,000 years, 25,920 years. Everyone's using that number. And why are they using that number? Well, in the early 1900s they calculated the processional cycle at 25,800 years. Then in the 90s, the 1990s, they recalculated the start patterns and the processional cycle. And then they realized it's 25,920 years. And they're like, oh, because we've got more modern technology, it's more accurate, that's it. And this is where all the main research is going wrong. And all they've got to do is search in their hearts, deep in their hearts, get past the scientific mind, logic, egoic thing that's going on with each and every one of them and look deep inside their hearts and they will find that this is right. Because I assure you, the rest of the universe, they know this. They know the cycle here. They know the duration. It's no secret to everybody else. It's just not understood by the people that are trapped in this paradigm and are trapped in the paradigms of the scientific world and all these studies that go on within this, on this planet. There's an acceleration, like, I'm sure everybody's experiencing time speeding up, right? Everybody, the hours are shorter in the day, and they truly are. And there's an acceleration factor because we need to achieve, when you want to exit linear time, you have to exit at 90 degrees. If you want to time travel with your, like when I travel with my greater being, my greater being just X is at 90 degrees, okay? And the time is speeding up, so for this planetary body to reach critical mass, it has to speed up. And it's spinning around the sun proportionally at the same time spinning on its axis faster, so you don't actually realise it's happening. And we're on like a J-curve. It's like a log logarithmic J-curve. And the acceleration factor is 24,832 years, right? And that's the fixed timeline. Okay, from there to there, the fixed timeline. And we're on this one, which is called the illusionary timeline. That's where it steps in. And yes, it is an illusion to a, to a certain degree, but not the extent that you know I was talking about previously. And we are going through an acceleration process, and that is plus 6.18%, which is 1 over 5 for the people who are into that sort of thing. The 5 is the golden ratio, that's the heart. 
Okay, that's the numbers involved with creating that spiral, the golden spiral. Now, when you recalculate, like if today they were to recalculate the, the procession, they would find that it's 26,100 years or something. Because when this is completed on the 21st of March 2015, it will be 26,366.618 years. And again, we have the golden ratio on the end. So I just needed to clear that up. So for those people who are really into that kind of thing. So because I, I keep seeing all these fantastic researchers and they're stuck on that 25,000 920 years, and if they were just to move across and look at those numbers, just consider them in their calculations, bam, it'll all just open up for them. Everything would just go plonk, 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 plonk. All the cogs would fill in the, sit in the place. All the pieces of their puzzles would come together. But a lot of them just don't like the fact that who's this guy from down under that's saying this stuff? Who does he think he is, right? Well, it's inside each and every one of you, this knowledge. Okay, please, it's not an egoic thing. Okay? Now, knowing that that's the cycle, and knowing that that number five is the Christ vortex number. So we're basically taking the Christ energy and we're injecting it into the duration of the cycle. So the outcome of that oh, is the value of the 15 just happens to be the sum of your DNA codons. Okay? That number, that's what it equals. The number you get 153, which is the Magdalene, right? Just a coincidence, right? Just a coincidence. 34 is the DNA wavelength. So the wavelength of the DNA from there to there is 34 angstroms. So you can see when you take that duration of the cycle, and you inject the Christ energy into it, it plugs in, it plugs into your DNA, it plugs into the divine feminine, it plugs into everything. If people would just look at those numbers, they're missing out on a lot, they really are. And the 47 is the flock. And in the Hebrew alphabet, the Magdali there, the Magdalene, is the tower of the flock. Okay? Just another coincidence. Now, if you take the duration of the cycle of 24832 again and you put the 64 codons into it, you get 388. And in Gematria, that is the sun. Just another coincidence, right? So I could I could rattle stuff off all day to do with Jamacha and the numbers, but I'm not going to do that. So let's keep it simple. I've mentioned before that the universal consciousness has manifested itself as Father, Son, Mother Earth in order to personally facilitate our return to oneness and ascension into the Golden Age. So that's what I've got on my website with these articles, right? So I've got written, check this out. If people don't think that this is Mother Earth and that's Father, Son. 2, 4, 8, 3, 2 again. And the Gematria value for Sophia is 781. And the answer you get is 31.8, which is Helios, the Greek word for the sun. Just another coincidence. So let's take 24832 again 
and this time we'll inject into it the number 681 because that's the gematria equivalent of the word planet in Greek. And let's see what we get. We get 365. So you get the 365 days of the year and 365 is Mithras, the sun god. In Jumanji equivalent. Just another coincidence, right? Oh, Jumanji is not real. It can't be real. Right, let's try this one on for size. Let's take the cycle again, 24832. And let's put the word Jesus Christ into it. And that value is 2368. Now, you get 10.486486486486 and on it goes recurring, right? Now 10 is the value of Gaia, written in Greek. You can spell it that way or you can spell it with an I, it doesn't matter. I'll get into both numbers in a minute. They both match up beautifully. Just another coincidence, you put Jesus into the cycle, you get Gaia. What does the 486 mean? Petra. And who was the rock behind Jesus? Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is the rock, not Peter the Apostle. Mary Magdalene is the true rock of Christianity. Forever. I don't care what anyone else says, forever, the truth will always be the truth. If you want to break it up again, it also equals honey, the sweet nectar of life. What a beautiful woman she is. 1048 just happens to be the word Microcosm. Isn't that what we're doing here? It's a fractal of the rest of the universe. This is the microcosm of the macrocosm. It just goes on and on and on. Right, let's get 781, which is Sophia, right? And let's put into it. 388, which is the sun. And that gives us 2.0, There's your 2012. 886. Now, when in Gematria you're using harmonics, right? You can go one or two either side of the numeric value and it still applies. It's still valid. It's like an analog phone to a digital. You can still hear it, still connect, but digital phones, they just drop out. Right? So we're talking harmonics, we're talking relationship. So when you get numbers that are close, it's still valid. So in harmonics, triple eight would still be valid here, and that is Jesus. And you get 2012. And 128 is one from 127, which just happens to be, oops, 127, for all those number buffs, equals the square root of phi of the Christ vortex. It just goes on, folks. And now I wish to share with you what I feel is incredibly important. This is what I understand about our friend Pi. Okay, sorry, I've just got to change the tape. I'll do this one thing and then we'll get into the questions. Okay. Now I wish to share with you what I feel is incredibly important. This is what I understand about our friend Pi. Okay. You, I'll read it out. Pi to me is about the relationship between the masculine, the feminine, which is the circle, and the masculine, the line. It is the divine ratio of our Heavenly Mother and our Heavenly Father. 
If we take pi and inject it into the sphere of the mother, the complete circle, completion, wholeness or oneness, the result speaks for itself. You just can't, and there's more, like I've got pages of these equations. I could just keep going, but I don't want to do it to you. I think I've made my point, okay? I think I've made my point. You, can, you can't deny it any longer. Well, you can. Well, you can live in denial of it if you like. But I mean, it's beyond any sort of coincidence. It's ridiculous. All right, so question time, everybody. Please ask me anything. Don't hold back. Go for it. And if I can't answer it, I will. I'll do my best. Yeah, we're going to bring around a mic for you. Yeah. Uh, with the ascension process, yeah. uh, obviously you're an adult, you choose what you're doing. As parents, you know, we choose what we do with our children. Mm. Um, and so uh, thank you. That's a really good question because I've gone through these issues myself as a parent. Now, the way I truly feel about it deep in my heart is whatever the soul journey of my child is, that's what I will honour as heartbreaking as it may be, to have to let go of your child into the false light or into technology or even wants to be at a certain place and time where it will perish in the earth changes, whatever takes place, that is the journey of that individual soul. That's how I look at my children. I don't look at them as me, the earthly father. You know, I used to. I've had to move beyond that and look at the bigger picture of life and look at them as a greater being than just my son or my daughter. So I honour and I respect them and that's me expressing unconditional love. If you truly love something, you will set it free. Uh, we have three children, two of the small ones who said to me on a number of occasions, oh, when you go, we want to come with you. Oh. And, and I've never said when you pass away or anything like that. So I said, when you go, can we come with you? So does that have relevance? Yeah, what, what I know is there's going to be young children, like the par as parents, we've been on the planet longer than a lot of our children have. And the, and the children that are being born today are so f ooh, highly aware that a lot of children will be actually guiding the parents when the time comes. <laughs> right? Yeah, they know in their hearts where they're going. There's, you know, and some are so strong. There's, you know, their parents won't break their will. As controlling as some of them are, they won't break them. They are in for a rude shot coming up in the next few years. Jeez. Yeah. Yep. And anybody else like to ask a question? Yeah. Um, with those twelve DNA strands, yeah. how is it? process that you like, just empower our intent on premeditation and actually activating the um, doorways. Yeah, it's actually already happening without even our um, personality aware of it. I don't, everyone throws, you know, lower ego, all that business. I just like to call it the personality of this incarnation. So without your personality being aware of it, you're already activating them and it's happening. So. I know on a higher level the choice of who goes through and who doesn't go through has already been made. So I'm here to tell you, relax. It's cool, you know? You, if you're going to go through, you're going to go through. If you're not meant to go through, you're not going to go through. And it's okay. And just enjoy, enjoy every moment of life that's left in this reality. And it's all already happening. We're already doing it. You don't actually have to go sit in a cave and meditate for three years. You don't have to go on any of these incredible spiritual journeys. If you want to, you can. I mean, that's part of your journey then. But like I said to you, Joe Bloggs working in a factory, he's going through, you know? And he's not doing any of that stuff. It doesn't mean he's no less evolved than what I am, you know? Yeah, so believe in yourself, trust in yourself, and just know that your greater being, you, the real you, is already taken care of it, yeah. We just got to surrender to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you said that you've got three choices of where to go, mm. the phrase on the false light, mm. and you said you were going to stay here. Yeah. Right. So does that mean that when the earth turns into a star, 
that you perish with that? Or no. Happens, no. Maybe sure. What happens is dimensional doorways are going to open up all over the earth. And that, that is what this represents. The womb of the mother. These are the dimensional doorways that will... It, like that's a symbolic version of what's actually going to happen. I've spoken to some people and they've already said they've already seen... Like a, a good friend of mine had an experience where he walked out of one of the doorways to go and collect his mother. And he brought his mother to this field, um, grassland, where this doorway was. And he says, come with me, mum, in here. And she's going, where? All I see is the paddock, you know? And he goes, don't you see it? And she went, no. And he just was like, oh, torn between the love of his mother and his path. And he had to let go of his mum and turn around and walk through that, back through that doorway into Avalon. So we're going to walk through these doorways into Avalon. And once we're on that level, we're in sanctuary because we're above the lower vibratory levels of the third and fourth dimensional stuff that will take place here. Those dimensional doorways are a pathway to sanctuary. Right. And so the, when the earth gen, it's like that three month when the earth gen is um, after you walk through the doorways. Yeah, right? yeah. Because she'll be cleansing herself on this level, but when the actual time, like earthquakes and tidal waves and everything, because you've got to understand when you're in the fifth dimension, there is no steel, there is no plastic, there is no electricity, there is anything like that. She's, she's got to return her body back to the fifth dimension. So she will crush everything. Like if there is a steel tower on the top of Mount Everest, that will go. So everything has to go. Yeah. And then we'll prepare for the ascension process, which is that activation of the starlight body. And that's when the outer crust melts. Gone. Yeah. And we go into this high vibratory state. Because when you travel to the sun, this sun, or any other star, like where, where I come from, from Cirrus, is one of the stars. That's actually a planet on a higher level. You see? It's just that it's vibrating at a higher level, but you see it as light. That's all. The, the sun here is a planet too. I've got friends who have travelled there and read scrolls and spent time there and journeyed there. People have gone through the sun because it's a doorway as well, it's the stargate, it's the real stargate, you know, and this planet is now the stargate, this planet's becoming a star as well, and that's with the feminine taking that plunge into the lower universe as that sacrificial journey, and then coming back up in divine union to be equal with her loved one once again, vibrating on the same level. That's why she's turning into a star. It's, it's the return back to her loved one. Yeah. Yes, Simon. Well, um, yeah, well, um, I've got friends and myself personally who have travelled through the sun already and taken that journey many times with our higher consciousness. So when the time comes and these doorways, you, you will just be automatically in here, you will just be guided to go somewhere and walk through. I've, I've also journeyed in the future and I saw myself standing outside one of those doorways and there was another friend with me and there was lots of people running up to where we were and they were all preparing to walk through and we had to settle them down because they were, you know, a little bit frantic, huffing and puffing and that's what a lot of people in this room are going to be doing. We're going to walk through these doorways, then we're going to come back out and then we're going to help the people. Okay and you will automatically know inside of you. Don't let anyone tell you what to do. I can't tell you what to do. I just know what's going to be happening, you know? That's all. But I'm not here to tell anyone what to do. You just follow what's in here. Yeah. yeah. Yes? Um, I had a person who had a similar experience with their sins. Uh, Vortex, where you guys discuss the places. Yeah. Um, just because what colour was yours? Blue. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, how long do you uh, feel that we're actually going to be? Is it like a void that we go in and wait for this three month period? Or are we going to uh, be able to this uh, space where the time is of a different frequency of time and we're going to be able to go through it? Like, it's going for a day or is that Yeah, it will. It'll feel different. Right. Um, and then uh, this fifth dimension, heaven, um, 
Actually, I think it's very good. Yeah. It, well, heaven, heaven, what we refer to as heaven is the fifth dimension. Yeah. But where we're moving into when we ascend is something totally brand new that's never existed before. You know, you, you told, you, you're talking about a whole planetary, see the, the Christ figure or the Buddha or the Krishna or whatever, right? That level, that's what you're going to become, equal with that. So Mother Earth is giving birth to a whole planetary race. That's why the darkness is so incensed at the moment. Because one, going around the universe is bad enough. Imagine having a whole planetary race of Christ the beings roaming the universe. <laughs> like they are going, you know? And when we do reach that Christhood, the idea is, and you'll be omnipresent, and this will all happen simultaneously at the same time, you will be given a void to go and create your own universe. Okay? So you instantly you, you've reached the status of a creator God, and part of your consciousness will go off and do that. Then you have duties and responsibilities in the lower universes, in the fourth and the third. So part of you will go back to your home galactic systems and your home star nations, an aspect of your being, and you will go and you will teach, okay? The wisdom of life. And that's why it's a ripple effect. And this is on the chalice lid in Glastonbury. And of course, every symbol has a multi-dimensional meaning, and I'm just going to give you one that I think is really important here. If you look, at, when you throw a stone in a puddle of water, you get the ripple effect that goes out. So here's the sun, and here's the earth, and when they become two suns, the energy beam of each one will ripple out, and eventually, this part here grows, grows out and out, this beautiful balanced state here. And so you've got the twin flames in here, which have merged and become one. And then as they go out, they grow and they become one big ripple, and that will go out. And so the effect of the fourth dimension, when this transpires here, it will have a ripple effect not only energetically, but practically, pragmatically, functionally throughout the whole universe. What's going on here on this planet right now is the process of creating peace, is bringing all the separation and all the pain and all the suffering to an end. The ripple effect, yeah. Anybody else got any questions? Anything at all, feel free. Otherwise, I'm going to start talking again. You don't want that to happen, do you? <laughs> um, on your model of the dimensions, yeah. um, what, what level is a star on, like as, as, a, as a sort of fractal down? Mm -hmm. As we look up at the stars, mm -hmm. what dimension your model are they in? Um, so, some are fifth. Uh, the lowest one's a fifth. Yep. That's as low as they go. In, in my model, in my understanding. I could be wrong, but that's how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. And just so you get an understanding too, um, I've recently come across um, a mantis being who is part of the Orion League. Like the higher aspect of this being is the star you know as Rigel. And it's interesting because, like, you know, the, mant the, the mantis beings and these type of insect beings were the fir very first physical structures that lowered down into the, that came down into the lower universes. Because the reality was really harsh. So that's why they had this really tough external shell to accommodate life in that harsh environment. So the understanding is that this being on another level is that star. And it's interesting because it's not only an insect being, but its star vibration attracts insect grey races as well, the Rigelian greys. So it's really interesting to understand 
the structure of our galaxies, of our universe, and how when your being resonates, because that's what we call gravity, right? We gravitate, your soul gravitates. People don't understand gravity. The scientists go and scratching their heads, we don't understand what gravity is. Well, it's really simple. It's the law of attraction. But that's all it is. There they're going through all these crazy scientific formulas, this, that, the other, and say, hey guys, the answer is really this simple. It's the law of attraction. So when a being resonates itself as a planetary body, it sends a signal out through the universe. And all the souls that need that experience and that life and that journey will naturally want to gravitate and incarnate in that realm, that vibratory realm. It's that simple. Okay. Oh, I've got to share this with you. If no one's got any more questions. Yeah, you got one? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to know what's your comment on uh, the other contactees out there and their version of the truth and hmm. the bad and evil guys. Yeah. So this, this your version, like their version actually in, intertwined somehow? Um, there's a lot of them that overlap. Yeah, because we're on individual journeys, sometimes my perspective will be different to someone else's perspective in small ways. Some are really big because a lot of them have been contacted by the false galactic federation of light, you see. So you've got to search deep in your heart to see what feels right for you, okay? If you feel that what I'm sharing isn't right and you resonate more with that other stuff, then that's great for your journey, that's good, you know? They are, because what they're trying to do here is make everything as messy and confusing as possible. They, they don't want anyone to know who's who and what's what. They don't want anyone to get a grasp on it. They want everyone floating in the sea of uncertainty. Because when uncertainty breeds fear, you see. Okay? Then when you're not sure, you're not sure about yourself, you're not sure about anything that's going on then you're like putty in their hands. But when you've got it like I've got it, rock solid, anyone tells me, right, that you're delusional, that I'm delusional, that I'm crazy, all this sort of stuff, okay, I understand, everyone's entitled to their opinion, I fully love, honour and respect that. But they're not going to change me. They're gonna, not going to change all those years of torture I went through. Okay? Not, there's things that have happened to me that you can't imagine. No one's going to change that and take that away from me. So I've seen many different races on many different levels. I interacted with really good races. Some of the mantis races are the most incredible beings you'll ever meet. The wisdom. Trillions and trillions and trillions of years of wisdom. So much love. Okay? And then there's evil ones too. Okay? So you, the, the best way to distinguish is what resonates in here. That level of discernment surpasses everything. Make that, and I'm sorry I'm going to say these words, but it's appropriate, your bullshit monitor. Okay? Make it that in here. And not, not the heart chakra here. I'm not talking about that chakra, I'm talking about the one up here. Because okay? we're integrating all seven into one. You'll see Buddha and Jesus, big chakras open on the chest here. This is what I'm talking about. Okay? If you, if you want to go home and do a good meditation, right? you just sit there quietly and put your hands here and press in here and focus your intention in there. Don't worry about traversing the universe, you go in here. Okay? Jesus said, Buddha said, the pathway to heaven is within. You go in there. That's your connection to your higher self, to your God being. Okay? It's above, yeah. It's, it's pretty much about where the microphone is. You feel it. You, you can press in your chest here, and then you'll just touch a spot, and it's like, oh, it just feels different than everything else. Okay? It really does. Pardon? Yeah, Patrick's the heart self. The heart self point. And this is what I want to say to all the people who are healers, to all the people who are healers, I've got a big message for you. 
Okay? So, if you contact the person you are healing and you tune into this part of their being, you focus your intention there, and what you do is you bring the light from in there out. Because you are connecting to that person's higher being. You are then connecting to that person's soul journey. That is the magic key to unlocking what's inside each and every one of us. It is limitless, that energy source in here inside everybody. Connect with that part of the person when you do your healing. And you will see amazing things occur. It is really that simple. Okay? Yeah. But I just want to get clarity by summing up the last statement sort of into 30 seconds. Yeah. If I'm understanding correctly, you see the doorways, yeah. walk through the doorways, go into the space of sanctuary. Yeah. While we're there, the earth becomes a star. Yes. Then are we coming back onto a regenerated earth or are we all headed off into different directions? Yeah. Once the planet becomes a star, you will be in an environment and I travelled into the future and I s experienced it for myself and I assure you I didn't want to come back. There are no shadows and that was a really freaky thing to get a handle on. Because you can go like this, right, and you look in there, you, you look in there and there's the same amount of light in there as there is around you. There are no shadows because there's no duality and there's no sun in the sky of course because the whole reality is illuminated. You look under, under here under a chair, under a lounge, there's no darkness. It's gone. And it, or the whole ecosystem feeds off light. Everybody is living off pure energy of light. Nothing consumes anything else. So you don't it, need food. No. You don't even need to breathe. You don't have to think about anything. All you do is just be. Yep. It's way beyond anything that you refer to as angelic. It's beyond all of that. On this reality, when you're with your partner, okay, and you just love each other and you just embrace each other and you don't even have to think or ask. If you need a knife and you work in the kitchen together, you go to turn around to grab a knife and there your partner is handing you a knife already. You know that total synchronistic, wonderful feeling when we're working together and loving one another in harmony. The whole, you just function in that mode. It's truly amazing. It's pure flow because you're flowing with your counterpart. And your counterpart may be off in one part of the universe and, and you've got full awareness of every moment and everything that's going on and everything that your counterpart is experiencing, you're experiencing instantaneously. It's total merging of oneness. Because remember, you'll be functioning just as the universal consciousness functions. You think of all those dimensional levels. You think of, I mean, you, you take one square metre of life on this planet and the complexity. You'd blow your mind figuring out the way life interacts in that one little square metre. Let alone all of us and a whole planetary body and a whole galactic system and all those dimensional levels. The vastness of power, of comprehension and design and harmony and functionality that we are talking about, that is how you're going to be operating. All of that instantaneously at your disposal. It is big. It really is big. And you're going to be told that this path, when those beings turn up, you're going to be told that this path is the path of the Antichrist. That's what you're going to be told. And just to hit on another point, you're saying by the time the doorways open, mm. You're saying that a lot of the people have already left on the other two paths. Yeah. So those who are still on the planet. No, they will have already left. Yeah, no, those who yeah. are still on the planet will be the ones walking through the doorway. Yeah, or some will perish in the earth changes. So you could say there's a fourth path, but it's not going to be many. The, the, the amount of people that will perish in these changes will be far less than what is spoken of. Far less. What, okay. What happens with the people who depart from the earth? Ah, that's a good question. Now, the people that will, you, the people that will leave and, and go with the spaceships, they will initially become agents of those beings. They will enslave you. And the way they do it is, it's like, what's the difference between, between us and a communistic state? 
The difference is a communistic state has a play area of that much. That's their level of freedom. Ours is this big. We're still contained. We've got more toys to play with. We've got more gadgets to play with. We get kept entertained more. But the truth is we're still enslaved. Right? Now, when these guys come along and promise you this version of ascension, well, you know, your playground is going to expand incredibly. And for those people that don't have the ability to see the boundaries and to understand that you're still going to be enslaved inside a system, because relative to what they've created here, this is going to be total freedom. People are going to take to it like candy, I'm telling you. Because they're, they're going about creating so much despair on this planet, so when their version comes along, it's just going to be, whoa, I want some of that. You know, but they will be enslaved in the system. And then eventually, through periods of time, because there's other planetary bodies that are being set up like this one, because this process is so successful, okay? But there's other beings who have manifested themselves as planetary bodies, sacrificing themselves just like the Divine Mother did, who led by example, and they will facilitate incarnational experiences for cycles to birth more planetary races of Christed beings. So while we've got one going on here, the journey does not end. It will continue and continue and continue to happen. So you've got people going through, uh, going with technology. Yeah. people going with the, the, uh, the fake lives. You've got the people going through the portals. Yeah. And you've also got the people dying. Yeah. Uh, the ones that perish in the earth changes will go back into the cycle of birth, death and reincarnation as, we, as already is happening here now. And they will either go back home to their galactic family or they'll be trapped, it depends on the journey. Each one's got an individual journey. Some might go back there for a while, and then they, what they will do is they'll gravitate and incarnate onto one of those other planetary bodies of which I'm speaking of. And some people call it New Earth or whatever, you know. We'll be taken to a New Earth or something like that, and that's all it means. It's just something similar to this one. Yeah. 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 Oh, the mic's coming. Yeah. I think for recording purposes, it's better through the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering, how do you ensure that you are healing and you are channeling, you are connected to the right kind of light and the right kind of things? Yeah. I would say just do your best. Just trust in yourself. Um, I know some really powerful healers. And they do modes, their modalities of healing I don't comprehend. Okay? I don't comprehend it. But something inside of me just trusts, just feels right. Okay? So, like I said, when you're actually healing the person and you're asking permission to do the healing on the person, which is, of course, you know, everyone should do that, you focus your intention here when you do it, in that person. Okay? And when you bring the light, activate the light from the inside out because that's what we're doing we're turning inside out I, 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 if I want to find peace and I'm feeling troubled I'll sit down and I'll bring like this liquid golden light from in the center and I'll just fill up my body with it you know and it just you can feel it pushing out all the things that need to be pushed out you know we've all got attachments I've still got some attachments happening if I didn't I'd be shining a great light that's the reality so we've all got stuff attached to us Still got lessons to learn, but you know, we're purging them one by one. They're coming out of our systems. And um, believe in yourself as a healer, trust in yourself as a healer, and just think about it. Well, if, if, if you're healing and you're connecting to an ascended master and using that being's energy to do the healing, I would be thinking about that one. I'm not saying it's wrong, okay, but I would be questioning that. Okay? So you might have a soul contract with that being and everything's good, but I know that there's just so many imposters in this reality and around this realm at the moment 
I mean, all you've got to do is read the channeled readings on the internet and you've got a Saint Germain saying this and a Saint Germain saying that and you get all these different Saint Germain guys and no, you can feel straight away that it's just all these imposters, all different beings talking, you know? So who's the real one? How do you know? You know? So trust in your heart. Trust in your heart. Yeah, just focus on the Christ center of the bang. The Christ center of that bang. The seed. It's a fractal of the sun out there. You've got a small one of those in here. Everybody's got one. Okay? And focus on that. And just you, when you look at it, like I could, I could look at every person and I could see their sun. It's sitting right here inside everybody. Everyone's got it. It's all shining. When I talk to people, uh, my friends will tell you this, I'm not just talking to your personality, I'm talking to the whole lot of you. You know? I always look beyond the personality and the physical body. I look into the being. Okay? And I can see when entities are working through them and manipulating them to give me a hard time as well. Okay? That's happened a lot in my life. A lot. Yeah, nodding your head. Yeah, there's so many people that experience that. They make your life hell. Relationships like with brothers or sisters or husbands and ex-wives and ex-husbands and you name it, parents, whatever. You'd be surprised how they've been manipulated because if they have an issue with you which is that big, these beings will make it that big. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, this talk that I'm doing here is basically spreading the message. Um, where it takes me from here, I don't know at the moment. I feel it's going to grow eventually. People will start. See, the, the more people increase their frequency and evolve, the more and more people start resonating with all this information. Um, there's an incredible amount of people. Yeah, there's, there's a few people leaving now. I just want to say, everybody, love, liberation, and fortitude, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Um, I feel that my path is taking me somewhere, because this is what I'm here to do. I'm, I, like, I went to Avalon recently, and because I'm one of the 12, of the, you know, taking responsibility, and I was one of the knights of the round table, for example, to do with that. What it means, what Excalibur means, the sword, Jesus was crucified on a cross. And that is really the sword as well, as far as, and galactic alignment, but on, on one level it means it means the sword in the stone. He was crucified on the mound, right? It's the sword in the stone. The sword represents knowledge. It represents the true knowledge from the good spirit. The truth, the revealing of the truth, the apocalypse. So, what, effectively what you do is you become the sword. So by me speaking here today and this going around all around the world on the internet, what I'm doing is I am ramming me, the sword of truth, into this matrix. I'm here to bring down this matrix. That's what I'm here to do. We all are. I'm just doing my bit to bring it down, and that's to speak the Logos. Okay? Everybody's doing their bit. Okay? If you're, if you're sweeping in a, in, a, in a back hall in a hospital somewhere, you're doing your bit. No one's better than anybody else. Because the amount of energy, while you're thinking, while you're processing, while you're interacting with people, the amount of energy that's being anchored into the earth plane for, from wherever it is you came, just your existence here is so profound. So profound. Does, would anybody object if I was to spend another five minutes explaining something? Would that be all right? Can you handle that? It'll turn into 10. It'll turn into 10. Uh, this one's a really good one. Uh, I wouldn't have suggested it if it wasn't. I've, 
I think it's important to get this one on the video, that's why. Okay, we have the DNA wavelength, okay? The vibration of the DNA. So, like I said, from here to here is 34 angstroms. Now, if you take the 34, the wavelength of our DNA, the vibrational pattern of our DNA, and you inject, and you multiply it by 1 over 5. Now, the reason you do it 1 over 5 is because we are below unity. So we're talking about the Christ energy below unity, below, below the Christ unity, un underneath oneness, okay? This is where we're at now. So when you inject that into the DNA wavelength, you get 21.012, 2012. 21st of December, 2012. Just a coincidence, right? So, let's now take the DNA again after 2012, when I said once we're in unity and oneness back in heaven, right? Let's inject the Christ vortex into that level of our DNA. The answer you get is 21st of March, 2013. Now, if you want to call that just a coincidence, you go right ahead. But to me, that's a slam dunk. That's when the planetary light body gets activated, 21st of March, 2013. So, I'll finish it there. I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming along. I want to wish you all the love all the liberation and all the fortitude to each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.